Hey guys, this week we are creating a quick Halloween cake with no baking at all. We are starting out with two shop-bought Swiss rolls. Yep, the perfect shape for a candle. You can of course make your own Swiss rolls or make a larger candle by stacking cakes, but this is a nice, quick but effective option if you haven't got much time to put something together. It's also great for getting two different flavours in. Here I have a regular jam Swiss roll and another candle can be a lemon Swiss roll. First, I'm chopping one side of the Swiss roll flat so it will stand up. It will be a tad wobbly at first, but insert a kebab stick down the centre and use this to hold it upright while you give it a coat of white chocolate ganache. My ganache is still fairly warm and runny, but this is ideal as a firmer ganache may pull off chunks of the delicate sponge. It's pretty messy, but go all the way around and cover the top. You'll be surprised how much stability just this one layer of ganache will give your Swiss roll for standing up on its own. Put this to one side to firm up. Now I'm chopping the lemon Swiss roll so I have two thirds and one third. Stand these up and also give them a coat of ganache. These shouldn't need kebab sticks as they are a lot shorter. Now the first coat has dried, you can see it's already much better at standing. Spread on another layer of ganache and then use a tall scraper to start smoothing the surface. Fill in any gaps and just keep going. If you want a perfectly round candle, you can put your Swiss roll on a small round cake card and use it as a guide for your outer layer. But I'm quite happy to let these candles be whatever shape they come out. Don't worry too much about the tops, as candles always bend and deform as they melt. Whilst they're set, dampen your cake board and cover it in some purple sugar paste. For an extra detail, I'm going to use this texture mat. I've chosen this one as it looks a little gothic. I'll leave everything I use in the description box below. You can roll a rolling pin across it, but I like to press it in with my hands. Gently peel back the mat to reveal the pattern and cut off the overhang with a scalpel. It's not often I cover my cake board first, but it will be pretty difficult to cover it around three different candles. You can leave it like this if you like, but now I've left my board to set up a little and I'm spraying it with black airbrush colour. Then I'm spraying it with water so that the colour runs into the deeper details. Wiping across the surface with kitchen roll will reveal the purple. It will eventually dry matte. Loosen your tall candle from the board with a knife. You can see how easy it is to handle now and just how sturdy it's become from the ganache. Just add some melted ganache to the bottom to stick it to your board. I'm putting mine on whilst the board is still wet, but I strongly suggest waiting until it's dried. You know me, always in a rush. Place your other candles on in an arrangement. To make them light up, I'm using real candles. These are some small plain white ones. You are free to sink tea lights in the top or those fake tea lights you can get. You can either wrap the bottom of these candles up in some food safe tape and insert it in, but I'm going to cut them down so only the very tip is lit and it's only sitting in the top of the ganache and not going as far down as the sponge. You can also use these plain plastic holders too. Prepare three of them and pop them to one side. Here I have some more white ganache, which I've added a little tiny touch more cream to, and of course, white gel to lighten it. This is freshly made and still warm. I fold a piping bag over the edges of a cup and fill it with my ganache. The Sonic cup is optional. Then you just gather the top of the bag and it's ready to snip off the end to create your drips. The tutorial on how to make white ganache is always in my description box. Start dripping randomly over the tops of your candles. I want some long ones that will pool on the board to make it extra spooky. Just do some short ones and long ones. Then fill in the tops by spreading it with a knife or a palette knife. Whilst it's still wet, carefully sit the tops of your candles in the centres.
for the candy corns, which to me is the only sweet that really screams Halloween, roll out a sausage of white, a sausage of orange and a sausage of yellow and then cut them all to the same length. We don't have candy corn here in the UK. I once imported a whole bag expecting them to be hard boiled, creamy yet fruity sweets. Oh man was I wrong. It was just sugar paste that had set a little bit. They pretty much taste exactly like what I'm making here. Candy corns always seem to have a white tip at the top, meaning the second triangle you cut with a yellow tip will be no good, so just put them to one side and continue cutting them until you have a few. I mean, you can still totally use them, I don't think people will notice, but I always have to be that little bit extra. Tap the cut edges to soften them out a bit and put them to one side. For the little bat who has overindulged himself on the trick or treat sweets, roll out a cone shape, bending the small end up and running your finger near the top to create a little bulging belly. Prop him up against one of your candles. You can see I'm covering up a little hole where my candle didn't quite come off the working board cleanly. This is why I make the cakes as I go. You can fix a lot of mistakes this way. For his feet, flatten another small cone and mark in little toes with a scriber tool or a scalpel. Curl his toes over a little and stick them to the base of his belly. Cut one of the candy corns so it looks like it has been nibbled and place it on his belly. With some black paste, this is straight up sugar paste with no tylo, but you can add some if you like. I'm freehand cutting out a bat wing shape. Join the lines from the top hump to the tips of the spikes. Attach the thinnest part of his wing up near his neck and press the hump part on the top of the candy corn, letting the tip of his wing just go round near his foot. Roll three tiny pieces of black paste like rice, group them together and then cut them smaller for his little hands. Don't use your hand as a cutting board like I do. I'm just used to it and know how blunt my blades are. Make another wing in the same way but lay this out on the board. His head starts as a flattened circle with the top part rolled in a little. Add this at an angle to the top of the neck and mark in two holes for eyes. Add little lines to these with a scriber tool before filling them in with either black balls of paste or black dragees. You can also add catch lights with small balls of white. With the Dresden tool, pop in a little smile and the tiniest little triangle of white for a tooth. A pink soft triangle will make a nose. Add this right above the smile, flattening it out and add in nostrils. For his ears, I'm rolling out some black paste and using one of my heart shaped cutters. These come as a set of nine different shapes and are available in my shop, but I don't have many left. I'm cutting out the medium size, which is a cute chubby heart shape. Then curl the two humps into each other to make a little curled ear. Add these to the head with water. As my drips were still wet, once the ear was stuck to the candle, I couldn't really move it, so always let things fully dry before continuing to decorate. Add in the little piece of candy corn and pile the rest up around the board. And we're done. Something quick to put together for a Halloween party or a centrepiece on the table. Here's what it looks like once the candles are lit. They look like real drippy church type candles. Little Bat made it home with his sweetie stash and has certainly pigged out on it. Bit like me with pizza. Hope you enjoyed this no bake Halloween cake. Don't forget to leave me a comment below and I'll see you again next week. Bye guys.